Good morning, and welcome to St. Charles Parish. I'm Father John Capucci, the pastor. As you know, we're going to be opening up masses next weekend. And so our mass schedule will be, as long as we have enough volunteers, as I have explained on Coffee with Capucci, we need 16 people for the three English masses, 16 for the Spanish and 16 for the Brazilian masses. As long as we have enough volunteers, we can begin a mass. This is not a time to sit back and let others do. This is a time when we come together. During this time of reopening, for a while, we're not going to be having music. And so we're gonna start that right now on our masses as well. We're going to have a, a mass without music because that is going to become the normal experience for a while. Today, we're going to offer mass for Sabina Williams, Francis Bernard, Michael Tremonte, those people in our military who gave the ultimate sacrifice as we celebrate Memorial Day, Leo Harkins, Jimmy and Angie and Courtney Quino, and Elaine Fiore Craig. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My sisters and my brothers, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, we pause and call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. My sisters and brothers, on the seventh Sunday of Easter, let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory, may experience as he promised until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's listen to God's holy word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem. From the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. The word of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. 
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? Believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. The word of the Lord. Lord, cleanse my mind, my lips, my heart, so they may worthily and joyfully proclaim your holy gospel. I ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. May the words of this gospel be in our minds, on our lips, and forever in our hearts. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the works that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I have had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you gave to me I have given to them, and they accepted them and truly understood that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. One day, we were sitting at dinner growing up, and all around the table, something of a conversation came up, and it went from is this yours or is this mine? My dad said to my mother. My mother looked at my dad with great love and she said, what is yours is mine and what is mine is mine, so don't forget it. Well, it took us all a few minutes and we all started to laugh. And of course, my mother and father laughed and my father made a face and he looked up at us and he goes, all oh, these times are so hard sometimes. It was very funny, and we laughed and laughed. You know, oftentimes in our world, we can find ourselves at 
at odds with each other. This is mine, this is yours. But that's not the way it is with Jesus. Jesus made it so clear. As the Father loves me and I love you, he prayed that we would have glory. For he knows that unless we know him and follow him, our lives will never be complete. That we need him and that we desire him and we cry out to him. For Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, has come so that you and I could have life and and have that life abundantly, and he prays for us. It's not an issue of turf and power or control. It's an issue of love, service, and generosity. Love. Do we love enough to help people around us grow in the glory of God? power. Do we use our power to help people to come to know Jesus and his goodness and control? Do we use the control that we have in the circle of the world around us to make a a conducive society that will know Jesus? Next week, the weekend of the 30th and the 31st, we're going to begin having Masses. I said at the very beginning of today's Mass that that in order for Mass to happen at the 4, the 8, or the 10 o'clock, we need 16 people per Mass. Well, it's going to be 8 people per Mass, two teams every other week. I prefer three teams, but I'll given to two teams. And what will happen? First, we'd ask you, we you just listen to us, follow our directions? Please don't fight us. What will happen is this. That door right over there, it's the door on Summer Street that's ramped. Everybody will enter through that door, and that door only. Okay? We can only allow a certain number of people to come into the church. This week, we're going to be marking off pews so that we know exactly how many can fit in this church, maintaining social justice, not social justice, but social distance from each other. Maintaining social distance will help in everybody continuing to be healthy. So when you walk into the church, what you will do is you're going to walk right in and the person will click because we can only have so many people in the church. When you get up to about where the baptismal font is, there's going to be a person there with a basket. We're not allowed to take up a collection during Mass. And so we'll have a basket that you can make your offering as you enter into church. You'll come to the center aisle, there'll be arrows. You'll come to the center aisle and then people will um, usher you to uh, to the seat that is next available. I know we all have our pews. And I know everyone loves the back of the church. But in order to have order, in order to have structure, and in order to fit the most optimum number of people that we can fit, we need to start from the beginning of the church, the front of the church, to the end, the back of the church, maintaining six foot distance. One part of the church will be set aside for families of three or more. The rest of the church will be able to fit for family members, um, husband and wife, or two people together, could be sister, brother, whatever, who are living together in the same home. And you can sit together during Mass. When it's time for communion, you will enter by this front aisle, and we will have six-foot lines that you should be maintaining at all times. At one point, 
there will be two people in the church who will squirt some hand sanitizer and you will sanitize your hands before you get up to communion. It would be my hope is that everybody would have hand sanitizer before you enter into church. And that way, there'll be no problems of people's um, bringing things in. To enter into church, you'll need to have a mask. The little joke I've been saying to everybody, but I think it makes sense, no mask, no mass. Now, with that having been said, there are some people who are physically unable to have a mask. If that happens, that means the pew in front of you, six foot distance, the people side of you, six foot distance, and the people behind you, six foot distance, will have to vacate those pews and move somewhere else if you cannot wear a mask. Everybody should wear a mask, and it's my preference that you do. If you have a health problem that you cannot wear a mask, let's be honest, you should still be maintaining your own personal self-quarantine and staying at home. But I'm not to mandate your life or tell you how to live your life. I respect you. But I also respect the health of everybody around you. So if you choose not to have a mask, then we will ask the people around you to move to a new area. Once the church is filled, that will be it for that mass. You can then go home and watch the mass online or try to come to the next mass. Some of you may be fearful. Some of you may not be able to come because of health. I want you to know, I respect you. Whatever decision you make, I respect and honor you. I do not in any way, shape, or form judge you if you choose not to come. And Cardinal Sean has made it very clear that people must exercise their right to take care of themselves. And I support that totally. I think I've never heard of Cardinal Sean being more pastoral and loving than when he said, we do not judge anyone who cannot come to Mass. But I'd ask you to do us a few favors. One, we need you to volunteer. We need you to greet people at the door and counting the numbers. We need you to hold the basket. We need you to be at the center of the aisle telling people to go down the center aisle and to meet that next usher who will then bring you to your seat and tell you where to sit. We need you to be Eucharistic ministers. We need you to be holding the, the container that we can um, sanitize hands with. In order to open up and open up healthy and wise, we just spent $1,000 in order to open up on, on sanitizing and the like. So we'd ask that you, together with us, make a decision that we're gonna make this parish great. When mass is over, we'll have more volunteers who will spray a disinfectant that kills 99.9% .9 of all germs. And we will spray down all the pews, the floors, the doors, and every area of the church that anybody has used. We will do that in order that the church continue to be safe for the next people to enter. We need you to serve. This is a time where those who believe in Jesus Christ and are a little bit younger and do not have any health problems to stand up and make a decision for the future, for the today. Many people have been lamenting the church has been closed. Well, now it's time that we make a decision. And we make that decision to celebrate the power and the glory of Jesus. For other masses, let me address. The schedule that we have right now is four on Saturday, eight and 10. I have not reinstituted the 5.30 mass 
because we've had a very difficult time getting people who will serve at that mass. We've had a difficult time with Eucharistic ministers, readers, and ushers. If it weren't for a very few people, nobody would ever serve at that mass. So I'm not reinstituting that mass because that mass has been a problem with people choosing to minister. The 1130 mass on Saturday morning, I am not reinstituting that mass. We've had the exact same problem. I've said it for almost two years that we need people who will be a Eucharistic minister, a reader, a person who will open up the church, a person who will help close the church, and nobody has come forth. That mass is suspended most likely permanently. The same with the 6.30 in the morning mass on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I've been asking that we have people who will help open the church, set up for mass, more people lector and Eucharistic minister, and nobody has come forth. Because of that, those, those masses as well will be suspended. If we have not had people choose to serve in the past, I don't believe that in the miracle of a moment, new people will come and rise up to the occasion. I believe the problem has been a problem and I don't see that changing. I say that to you with great respect and a little bit of fear. I don't wanna get anybody angry at me, but I want us all to look at what we're doing and how we've been behaving as a parish. This is not a time for us to sit back and let others do. This is a time that every single one of us must roll up our sleeves and get to work. In today's gospel, Jesus makes it so prayer, clear that he is not only praying for his disciples, but he's also praying for those who believe in his disciples and in him because of his disciples' words. That we are all called as his people to serve, to love, and to allow each other the privileged right to have a church clean and ready for worship. What does it say in that first letter of St. Peter? Did you hear it? Let no one among you be made to suffer, but whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. Sometimes to give of ourselves is a piece of suffering. Sometimes to give of ourselves, our time, our talent, means that we have to sacrifice. But I promise you, you will not sacrifice alone. I am with you in service and in love. But I ask you clearly, would you please be a people of service to one another so that together we can do the work that our Lord has called us to do. And our first reading today comes in the very beginning of Acts of the Apostles. Listen. All those devoted themselves with one accord to prayer together with some women, Mary and the mother of Jesus and his brothers. They were together as one. This is a time when we are one. One in union with each other, whether at home or here at church. Whether you're able to participate in, in church or at home, we are still one. But it's a time for those who are coming to church together to be devoted to service to one another. My mom said to my dad, what is yours? is mine, and what is mine is mine. Well, I say to you, what is yours in the church is yours. But together, we must never say, it's all about me. We must always say, it's all about Jesus. May I ask you if you would, is to proclaim your creed with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers and petitions before our loving God. We pray for Pope Francis and Cardinal Sean and all who lead the church that they strive to unite the church in the belief and truth of the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the reopening initiative of churches in Massachusetts. We pray the Holy Spirit comes upon us in a most powerful way so that we can be intentional disciples and be renewed in the fervor of our faith as we await Pentecost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for those in the healthcare and service industries and those in the research and development of vaccines that they seek the guidance of the divine physician who created and contains every cure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all our mass intentions we offer today for Sabina Williams, Michael Tremonti, Francis X. Bernard, all our military, the, who we will honor on Memorial Day on Monday, Leo Harkins, Jimmy, Angie, and Courtney Quino, Elaine Fiore Craig. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for the recently, the recent faithfully departed, for John W. Kickham, Jr., Deacon William Kane, Esther Uni, and Maria Pereira. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray that God will inspire many members of our parish to be at service to one another so that we may be an example of what it means to love, to care, and to serve. We pray to the Lord. We ask all of these prayers through Christ our Lord. We'd like to now bring up the gifts of bread and wine. And I'd also ask you to pray as I offer the gifts, all the prayers that you hold in the silence of your heart. And as I lift up the bread and the wine, you present all of your needs to Jesus who loves you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With the humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may I sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you. Lord, wash me of my iniquities and of all my sins, cleanse me. My sisters and brothers, please pray that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of our church and for all. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. After his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, my Savior, my Christ, praise you, my Jesus. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, my Savior, my Christ, praise you, my Jesus. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your faith, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the life gift, excuse me, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Though with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the absolute privilege to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, may the peace and the love of Jesus the Lord be with you always. Let us now bow our heads, pray for peace in our lives, in our homes, and in the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear us, O God our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these saving mysteries, there will be accomplished in the body of the whole church what has already come to pass in Christ her head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. So before the final blessing, I want to make a very quick announcement. On Wednesday, the 27th of May, on Wednesday, the 27th of May, at 7 o'clock, I will have a meeting here inside the church for all who would be willing to help the process of reopening the church. We'll go through everything that has to be done, making sure that everybody understands and that people sign up for what it is that they're comfortable with. I will not, I'm going to be very clear, I will not open up a mass unless I have two teams of eight each for each mass. This is your time to help serve us. If you'd like to serve us, you may call me, I'll give you my cell phone, 781-460-9502, 781-460-9502.
502. I believe that'll be right here. Or you can email me at pastor at sccwoburn.com. Pastor at sccwoburn.com. Please give me your name, your contact information, and the mass that you would like um, to serve at. So we need you at this moment, probably more than St. Charles has ever needed you. Thank you for being with us. I'm terrifically excited about our new beginning, maybe a little bit worried, but very excited. So thank you all so much for your yes and your desire to serve Jesus and one another. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you all soon.